نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فقهنا في الدين رب زدني علما اللهم اني اسالك علما نافعا رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته سوره السجده this surah was revealed in maka it has 30 verses three stanzas is the 32nd by the order of arrangement and 75th by the order of revolution it gets its name because in verse number 15 there is mentioning of prostration so that is why uh, allah subhanahu wa taala has labeled it as surah as sajda regarding the time period it was revealed in the middle period of the stay in makkah and the topics and the summary of the surah basically is about the belief and the faith of uh, oneness of allah the life here after and the prophethood of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is what the basic summary is that there is debate and proof regarding all these faiths and beliefs this is the last uh, makki surah of the fourth group of surahs and it has been reported in tirmizi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to recite this surah before going to bed bismillahir rahmanir rahim الف لام م تنزل الكتاب لا ريب فيه من رب العالمين الف لام م this is the revelation of the book about which there is no doubt from the lord of the worlds so in the second verse very comprehensively there is been an introduction to quran its revelation allah and his attribute allah is mentioning tanzil al kitab this refers to what it refers to slow progressive steady but yet continuous revelation of quran and we know that quran was revealed over a year over a period of 23 years of uh, the life of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, 13 years in makkah and 10 years in medina or do they say he invented it rather it is the truth from your lord that you may warn a people to whom no warner has come before you so perhaps they will be guided so despite allah subhanahu wa taala's introduction to the book people still had accusations that it is a fabricated book nauzubillah we've already discussed about it previously It is Allah who created the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them in 6 days then he established himself above the throne you have not besides him any protector or any intercessor so will you not be reminded Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and his creations he created all the universe in 6 days and then after creation he did not disappear he did not disappear or he did not leave it all even did not ignore all the creations of the universe he was where he was he has established himself above the throne and he is there the controller the master the sustainer and what does he in all these attributes he do he does what yudabbirul amr he arranges each matter from the heaven to the earth then it will ascend to him in a day the extent of which is a thousand years of those which you count so allah subhanahu wa taala from his throne he controls all the matters of the universe <coughs> that is the knower of unseen and the witness and the exalted in might the merciful who perfected everything which he created and began the creation of man from clay we do know that allah subhanahu wa taala in many verses of quran mentions creation of hazrat adam alayhi salam from clay in different stages which have been mentioned in quran 
Then he made his posterity out of the extract of liquid disdained. Rest of the human beings, they were they created, they are created from a liquid because after creation of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, the human body was given the capacity of automatic reprocreation or reproduction. And then the rest of the human beings, they were created from the fluid. Then he proportioned him and he breathed into him and from his created soul and made for you hearing and vision and hearts. Little are you grateful. Rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma ja'alni sabura wa ja'alni shakura wa ja'alni fi aini saghira wa fi a'yunin nasi kabira. Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura wa fi sami nura wa fi basri nura wa an yamini nura wa an yasari nura wa fawqi nura wa tahti nura wa imami nura wa khalfi nura wa ja'alli nura. And they say, when we are lost within the earth, will we indeed be recreated in a new creation? Rather, they are in the matter of the meeting with their Lord, they disbelieve. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the confusion the people had about the day of judgment and the life hereafter. Say, the angel of death will take you who has been entrusted with you, then to your Lord you will be returned. Allahumma aini ala ghamaratil maut wa sakaratil maut. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the condition of death and is followed by the narration of hereafter. If you could but see when the criminals are hanging their heads before their laws, saying, Oh, our Lord, we have seen and heard, so return us to the world. We will work righteousness. Indeed, we are now certain. And if we had willed, we could have given, and we could have given every soul its guidance. Allahumma ikhdina sirat al mustaqeen. But the word from me will come into effect that I will surely fill the hell with jinn and people all together. Allahumma ajirna min al nar. Allahumma la tajalna minhum. Rabbibni li ainda kabaitan fil jannah. So taste punishment because you forgot the meeting of this your day. Indeed, we have accordingly forgotten you and the taste of punishment of eternity for what you used to do. Only those believe in our verses who, when they are reminded by them, <coughs> Only those believe in our verses who, when they are reminded by them, they do what? Fall down in prostration. And what do they do in prostration? They exalt Allah with praise of their Lord. They are not arrogant. They arise from their beds. They supplicate their Lord in fear and aspiration. And from what we have provided them, they spend. So here in these two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the manners and the behaviors of those who believe in the verses of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us one of those to who will believe in the verses of Allah when they, when they are being read on them, when they are being recited to them, when they are being reminded by them, when they are being taught by those verses of Quran, who will believe in them? Number one, when they listen to them, they fall down in prostration. Why do they fall down in prostration? To thank Allah. To thank Allah that they, they in their life, before their death, they have been reminded by these verses. They have been informed about the do's and don'ts of Quran. They have been informed and they have been taught about the commandments of Quran. And they have been educated about the limits set in their lives by the teachings of Quran. So to thank Allah, so to thank Allah, they, they fall down in prostration and to praise Allah for all the beautiful commandments and the commandments full of wisdom and hikmah to praise Allah, they fall down in prostration and then realizing all their shortcomings and their sins and their faults and their transgressions and their disobediences, they, they fall down in prostration to seek forgiveness. 
And then when they seek, when they fall down in prostration, what do they do? They exalt Allah. This prostration is what, as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has reported, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says that when the when the person is when my bondsman is in prostration, I am closest to him. So that is why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "For aksar dua, make a lot of supplication." So what do we need to do? We need to supplicate in prostrations, and which prostrations? In the prostration of Salah, we just are supposed to recite the supplications which have been taught, the five supplications taught by Prophet Sallallahu in his sunnah for the supplications of Salah and uh, the prostrations of supplications of Salah. And as far as uh, prostrations other than the Salah, the supererogatory prostrations other than the Salah, we can recite the supplications of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or we can supplicate in our own words. But we have, as been educated by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that I have been prohibited to recite the Quran in the in the prostration. So we will not be supplicating by these words when we are in uh, in a state of prostration. We will not be reciting the verses of Quran. So that is why they come down and they prostrate. And they and the next the uh, the behavior of the people who believe in the verses of Quran are that they are not arrogant. They are not arrogant. They're not obstinate. They're not stubborn. So that is why when they lead when they read the messages of Quran, they surrender. They sub, uh, they surrender and they submit with humbleness. And what do they do? Because of the fear of Allah, they stay away. They this is what this is their super derogatory salah of night. This is the salah of the hajjud. So salah of the hajjud is also uh, a, a, a worship which leads to people reciting Quran, leaves them be one of the believers. Allahumma ja'alna minhum rabbana innana amanna faghfir lana zanubana wa kinna azab nar. So here in this verse is uh, the verse which uh, reminds, uh, which is the verse of uh, the prostration. And uh, we do know that when e <coughs> whenever we recite a words of recitation, uh, uh, we recite the words of prostration, we are supposed to uh, make prostration after reciting the words. And the surah also gets this name from this verse. And uh, how do we prostrate? We learn it by the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. <coughs> Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when the son of Adam, he recites the words of prostration and he prostrates himself, the shaitan withdraws weeping. And he says, woe to me, son of Adam Alayhi Salam was commanded to prostrate and he prostrated. So paradise will be his. And I was commanded to prostrate and I refused. So hell is mine. So this, uh, this tradition explains the importance and the reward and excellence of prostration when we recite a words of prostration. So how do we have to go about this prostration is that when we are reading or when we are reciting this verse of prostration in our salah, what do we do? We just say Allah Akbar and without bowing down, that is without any raku or without any uh, tashahud, we directly say Allah Akbar and we directly go to prostrate and we recite the dua which has been taught by Prophet Sallallahu for the prostration of uh, for the words of prostration and we just need to prostrate once and after prostrating once and reciting the supplication of prophet then they stand up saying allah Akbar. and just once prostration is needed and when other than salah we are reciting this verse of uh, prostration other than salah then even then all what we need to do is we need to make an immediate prostration we just say allah Akbar and immediately go into prostration recite the uh, supplications of prophet sallallahu and then we stand up and we start resume our recitation of quran and um, this uh, supplication uh, this prostration while reciting the quran which is as proven by the sunnah of prophet sallallahu this is uh, it would be better if we are in a condition of wuzu and if we are uh, facing the qibla but if in order to perform wuzu and to face the qibla we would have to delay the prostration then it would be preferable that we do the prostration immediately even without a state of wuzu or without facing the qibla 
So it is not necessary to be in a state of wuzu or to face a qibla. And we can do it. It would be definitely preferable and better if we are in a state of wuzu and if we are facing the qibla. And uh, there is a difference of opinion about the number of verses of prostration. Some say that they are 14 and some say that they are 15. And the supplication which has been uh, taught to all of us why, which we have to recite while the supplication, while the prostration is sajda wajiyaz wajiyah lillazi halakahu wa shakasamahu wa batharahu bihaulihi wa kuwatihi fatabarakallahu ahsanul khalikin. It says that I have prostrated my face to the one who created it and gave it its hearing and sight by his might and his power. And glory is to Allah, the best of creators. So it is a beautiful supplication which has been taught to us by uh, Prophet Sallallahu which we have to make in this prostration. And um, if I mention here the part from this part of the supplication is a very uh, giving a very important scientific information as well, because you know that the medical embryological sciences, they confirm that the creation, the stages of the creation of the human face are exactly in this order there is a blob of cells for the face. In the in utero life during the embryonic stage, when there is a blob of the cell substance from which the face has to be created, first of all, by the order of Allah, there is a, there is a pit created for the air where the air bud and the rest of the air and the organ of the air develops. And then after this pit for the air, there is a slit or a cut in that blob of cells, which leads to the uh, construction and the creation of the eye. So the first is created the ear bud, and then there is shakka sam'ahu. So first, this is exactly this way. This is the order of creation in the embryonic life. And this supplication of Prophet Sallallahu is actually giving a very latest embryological information. This means what? The source of Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu who was definitely, who did not know how to read and write, but 1400 years hence giving such a, such a embryological, scientific, medical information in his supplication, the source of Hadith and Sunnah is what? Is the revelation from Prophet, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They arise from their beds, they supplicate their Lord in fear and aspiration. And this is how we need to supplicate. From what we have provided them, they spend. And no soul knows what has been hidden for them of comfort of eyes as reward for what they used to do. This is one who was a believer, then is one who was a believer like the one who is defiantly disobedient. They are not equal. As for those who believed and did righteous deeds, for them will be the gardens of refuge as accommodation for what they used to do. But as for those who defiantly disobeyed, their refuge is fire. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Every time they wish to emerge from it, they will be returned to it while it is said to them, Taste the punishment of fire, which you used to deny. And we will surely let them taste the nearer punishment, short of the greater punishment, that perhaps they will repent. Allahumma ja'alni saburam wa ja'alni shakura, rabbi khfir wa raham wa anta khayru rahimeen. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. Allahumma khfir lana walil mu'minina wal mu'minat, wal muslimina wal muslimat. And who is more unjust than the one who is reminded of the verses of his Lord and then he turns away from them? Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Indeed, we from the criminals will take retribution. And we certainly gave Musa alayhi salam the scripture. So do not be in doubt over his meeting. And we made the Torah guide for the children of Israel. And we made from among them leaders guiding by our command when they were patient and when they were certain of our signs. Indeed, your Lord will judge between them on the day of resurrection concerning that over which they used to differ. 
Has it not become clear to them how many generations were destroyed before them as they walk among their dwellings? Indeed, in that are signs. Then do they not hear? Have they not seen that we drive the water in clouds to barren land and bring forth thereby crops from which their livestock eat and they themselves? Then do they not see? And they say, when will this when will be this conquest? If you should be truthful, say on the day of conquest, the belief of those who had disbelieved will not benefit them, nor will they be reprieved. So turn away from them and wait. Indeed, they are waiting. Rabbana, innana, amanna, faghfir lana, zanubana, wakina azab nar وَقِنَا أَذَابُ الْقَبْرِ وَقِنَا أَذَابُ الْحَشْرِ وَقِنَا أَذَابُ الْمِيزَانِ وَقِنَا أَذَابُ النَّارِ اللَّهُمَّ آنِسْ وَحْشَتِ قَبْرِ اللَّهُمَّ آنِسْ وَحْشَتِ حَشْرِ رَبَّنَا رَبَّنَا أَتْمِمْ لَنَا نُورَنَا وَاغْفِرْ لَنَا إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ اللَّهُمَّ حَاسِبْنَا حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا اللَّهُمَّ أَجِرْنَا مِنَ النَّارِ رَبِّ ابْنِي لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين امين ثم امين